Hey guys, today I'm trying out a new game called Main Assembly. Well, it's about a year old, but it's new to me at least. Now I've only played the tutorial so far, but I want to try making a dragonfly machine. So, let's get right into it. So I was looking for where I should start in the sandbox, because there's multiple levels to try out, and I decided to go for this one called Dummy World, and it seems to be some sort of like amusement park, and it has a lot of nice scenery, so I figured that's the one I wanted to go for. And I went all the way to the back of the island, and this is where I have a nice flat, sandy area, and this just seemed like a good spot to start building. So after I picked the spot, I went into the assembly mode, and I was looking around for where my car ended up spawning, and it was behind me for some reason. And it ended up being this car, which I mean, towards the end of the tutorial, just for fun. And it's sort of just propeller on top of a car. It's kind of dumb, but it ended up flying decently well, actually, until I ended up slamming into the water. So with that sort of out of the way, I decided to delete everything I had on it, since there's really nothing to reuse, and I just kept one chassis frame, and this is going to be the base of my dragonfly. So I just expanded out that frame a little bit, and what I'm going for is sort of just a rectangular prism, because really there's nothing else to start with, and once I had that, I put in a hinge. Now the hinge sort of just does exactly what you think. It's going to hinge whenever I tell it to, but in order to get some control, I also need to put in a docking station. So I put that in the back of my robot. Robot. And once I got that there, I went into the programming mode and just verified which key was going to be rotating the hinge. And it seemed to be whenever I hit F, it was going to rotate the hinge, so I just sort of left it as it was and tried it out here. So you can see as I hit F, it does in fact rotate the hinges, but it's pretty slow. Slow enough, it's not really useful. It would be really hard to make something fly with that sort of wing speed. So what I did is turned up the motor strength, turned up the angular speed, and also turned up the speed to power ratio, and gave it another try here, and it was working. And it was definitely faster, but it wasn't that much faster. And I realized it's because the speed to power ratio, I turned the wrong way. Basically, I want to put it up to 100. I made it really powerful, but not that fast. And I actually wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to make it really fast, but not that powerful. So once I did that, you can see here, it is much faster, and this is definitely be good enough to start making my wings with. So once I had a very basic power source kind of working out, I wanted to start by making a kind of a T shape basically to put the wings on. Now I wanted to get them out from the body a little bit because I was a little worried when the wings were swinging around, they'd hit into the body and stop or slow down or something like that. So just getting them further out just seemed to be a good move. So after I made those two extensions, I wanted to start messing with the servos. Now I need these servos because I need to be able to rotate the wing so that on the way up it cuts through the air, but then I can rotate it back so on the way down it ends up pushing down on the air, so I get an unequal balance of the amount of force I'm pushing down and up, and that's what creates lift. So here I'm putting in a single rod to hopefully rotate when I rotate the servo, and I finally found the servo in the parts menu, and I put down the rotate node, I also put down the current angle node. This is an informational node, which is pretty interesting, you can like read what angle the servo's at. I don't really need that though, I just need the rotate node, which lets me rotate it. And you can see here in testing, it does rotate the servo, but it's not rotating that rod I put in place, so I deleted that rod since I didn't need it, and on the servo, I ended up putting an attachment node, and on that, I ended up putting a hinge. Now with the hinge and the servo, this really should have been everything I need to start flying. So I'd be able to push down the hinge to push down the air, and I could cut up through the air using the propeller blade when the hinge pulls up, and therefore I'd be able to create some lift. Once I got the hinge in place, I wanted to put down the propeller on top of the blade, and I wasn't going to spin it up or anything, I was literally just using it as a makeshift blade, and I could have used a panel for this, but putting the propeller down was just really easy right now, so that's just what I went for. And I also made sure to have the hinge be on the spacebar, so I'd be able to have two separate controls for rotating the servo and rotating the hinge. Once I got all that in place, you can see I'm able to rotate the hinge just fine, but I'm not able to rotate the entire thing sideways. I realized the servo is moving, it's just not rotating the hinge at all. So I deleted the attachment point that I had on top of the servo, and directly attached the hinge to the servo, and now you can see I'm able to tilt it forwards and backwards, and I'm able to rotate the hinge as well to get this full range of movement. Now, technically this should have worked to make it fly, but you can see it was nowhere near where it needed to be. In fact, this was pretty bad. So I deleted the propeller I had, and I was thinking if I added in a panel instead, I might be able to get a little bit more drag and maybe at least get somewhere for a proof of concept. And it maybe seemed to be better since it was lifting up the front of this, but I realized it's just because the panels are ended up rotating right into the ground, so they were just hitting straight into it and not getting anything done. So this was creating no real lift, and I decided to delete the hinge and instead use another servo. And the reason for this is that the hinge has its attachment point sort of on the opposite side of where I would want it to be. I could definitely work around it, but the servo ended up just being a really easy way to get things done, and I decided just to work with two of those instead. So I got my second servo in place, and I should be able to rotate a panel piece to hopefully rotate the entire wing down, and here you can see I'm able to rotate it forwards and backwards, and also tilt it up and down, and with these two different movements I should be able to do everything I need to do to get the wings to work. So I started working on the wings again, and for this I basically just ended up building a nice little platform like this, and if I give it a quick test here you can see I'm able to rotate the servos up, 
and kind of flick the entire robot into the air. But we're going to try to give it a quick flight test here. It doesn't really work, but you can see the movement is right. It's pushing down, it can rotate back, sort of swing where it needs to be, and I'm kind of cutting through the air on the way up and pushing down on the way down, and I should be able to fly with this. Now manually making this move is really annoying, and I was hoping to automate this. Now I put down a delay node, and I thought I could use two of those to make a timer, but it turns out there's an even simpler way to make this work. There's literally just a wave generator in this game, and I can use that to automatically tell the servos to swing up and down, and I don't really have to do anything else to make that work. So put it on the square wave mode so that it'll tell the servos to immediately swing straight up and straight down. And once it did that, it turned up its period a little bit, and I was going to use a flip-flop as some sort of signal divider, which would work in real life, but these flip-flops actually function a little bit differently. They're more like toggleable switches. So instead, I realized I could actually use a delay node to do exactly what I want. So I deleted the two flip-flops, and what I needed to do is set the delay node to delay exactly one quarter of the entire cycle time of the wave node. Now, what this is going to do is create a slight offset between when the blades are pushing down and rotating, and it's going to do exactly what I wanted to do, with it rotating out of the way so it can cut through the air on the way up and push down on the way down. So here I have that in place, and it was definitely automatically moving, but it just was kind of weird and it wasn't doing what I wanted, so I thought maybe it was going too fast, so I adjusted the period and the delay time. I gave it a quick test here, and it was working. The servos were aligned wrong, but it was working. You can see that the blades rotate, they push down, rotate again, and then pull up. And this is exactly what I need. So I just adjusted the servo positions so that they're facing the way I want them to, and now it is perfectly working. The blades end up pushing down, rotating back, pushing forwards, rotate up, and then they can push down again. And this means I'll create a net force down. It also means I'll technically create a net force backwards. That's going to be less of a problem though, as you'll see, but it is a slight quirk these wings have. So really, I just extended out the wings, because I figured really just more thrust is probably what I need. So I tried that out here, and it's still going a little bit slow, but you can see it might be doing something. It's a little hard to tell. So I decreased the period time to half of what it was, and after I did this, the wings were still moving the way they should have, but it's kind of impossible to tell if they're creating any actual thrust, and I was inclined to believe they really weren't. So I increased the size of the blades again, and now things were just going crazy, but it seemed like it might have been doing something. So what I did is switched out whatever material I had for the wings with light aluminum, and once I did this, I gave it another test, and it was a lot more stable this time, and it may have actually been making the front move up a little bit. So I increased the speed of the blades again, and it didn't really seem to have too much of an effect, I think it's because the wings are actually moving so fast, they weren't really moving correctly anymore, and I wasn't really getting that imbalance between the force I'm pushing down and up, and now there wasn't really as much thrust. So I increased the size of the body of this, and also flew over to the water, and once I did that, I gave it a quick test in the water. I wanted to see if there was really any difference between being in the air and the water, but it seemed like the water really didn't do anything for me. In fact, if anything, I was sort of just sinking slowly, so I increased the size of the blades, gave it another test here, and it really seemed to be getting close. It was sort of hopping off the ground, a little bit, and I realized I've been missing something pretty obvious, and that's using the arrow materials. Now, the arrow materials really let you push off the ground a lot more, since they give you a lot more drag, and this dramatically affected how much I was getting off the ground. You can see here, I'm really starting to get off now. So, increase the size of the blades even more, but once I did this, it seemed like the automatic control was having a bit of trouble making the servos move, so I turned it on to manual control instead, and once I did this, you can see as I push the blades up, nothing happens, but when I push them back down, the entire body moves up. Now, this could have been because I was moving so much mass down that the body was pushing pushing itself up, but I think a little bit of thrust is being produced. And while this is beside the point, you can see here as the wing ends up hitting the body, it actually kind of damages it a little bit. This game I did not realize has active damaging, which is kind of cool. So I had to remember that for the future whenever I make stuff. But for now, that's sort of just a nice aside. And I wanted to put in a second set of blades. Now, I actually don't feel too bad about doing this since it was the plan anyway. Dragonflies have two sets of wings, so really having two sets of wings here just makes perfect sense. But I was hoping to get one set of blades to get this off the ground, since that meant anything else was literally just gravy, and I can make this thing go even faster. So once I got those wings in place, I now had two more sets of servos in the back. So I ended up putting those back on the programming board, and I accidentally grouped them together. I did not realize that was a function of this game that you could set two things to be exactly the same, so I just ungrouped them since I actually need them to be different, and I started working on the programming. Now, I technically could have just had them do exactly the same thing the front set of blades was doing, since those were already working, but what I wanted to do was negate them instead. Now, what this negation does is it allows me to have the front set of blades do the opposite of the back set, so that means when the front set of blades is pushing down, the back set is pulling back up and getting prepared, and when the back set of blades is pushing down, the front set is getting up and getting prepared. So that means I'll have a more constant force output, and this should reduce vibration, hopefully, and also just make the whole thing a little more stable. Now this did have quite the downside, because as you can see here, the wings end up just hitting right into each other. Now to fix this problem, I just had to shrink them down, and I was sort of just moving them around a lot, trying to change the geometry a ton, and I could never quite get it to work unless I made the blades really small, which kind of made them useless. So I had to extend out the body of this thing quite a bit, and once I did that, after 
quite a lot of messing around with it, finally got a design that for the most part, wasn't really hitting itself. Once I had that, I turned up the speed of this a ton, and I was hoping to get any kind of lift, and that kind of occurred here. You can see it's actually gliding across the surface right now, which was a lot more than I was expecting to get from this. And I thought it was just randomly drifting, but actually here, I went up to a really steep hill, and to my amazement, it actually went straight up it. So I figured we must have had a ton of lift to the point where I was almost ready to take off. We just needed to tune it a little bit more. So I increased the size of this thing a ton more, and I was hoping with a much larger set of wings, I'd be able to get off the ground a lot easier. So after a couple tunings, I eventually tried it out here, and you can see I'm really close to getting off the ground. It ends up almost fully coming off at times, and then falling right back down slowly and I thought maybe these wings were actually not quite as efficient as they should be. Here you can see as the wings end up pushing down, they kind of flick at the end, and this flick makes me think I'm losing a lot of energy because they're not pushing down all the way. So I increased the delay that makes them flick up, and once I did this, it seemed to immediately be quite a bit better, and surprisingly, it fully got off the ground and started rising right up. Now, I have no way of controlling this, and I was actually surprised it was this stable at all, since I had literally nothing, no thought put into this at all to make it stable. So surprisingly, it was just sort of working out here. But I was going straight into the air, and I figured I could probably mess around with some of the controls to get this thing to be able to steer and do whatever I wanted. But now that I was working, the next thing I wanted to do was actually delete what I had. Now, that's kind of the truth. Really wanted to shrink it down a little bit more, since I had a lot of wasted space and a lot of wasted mass and all that, just making me a little bit more efficient I figured would give me the best chance possible. I also wanted to change out the blades since before they looked literally nothing like a dragonfly, I have no idea what that was supposed to be. So if I just fix it up a little bit to give them flat, long wings, I should be in business. So once I got my two servos positioned, basically exactly where they were before, just in a smaller container, I started making my wings. Now you'll notice the wings in the front definitely look a lot more like dragonfly wings than the ones in the back, and it's because I balanced them out first of all, so that I have an equal amount of wing on the front and the back of the connection point, and also they're a lot skinnier, and I'm gonna make them a lot longer. So to leave the wings in the back, and I'm gonna replace them with the wings I have in the front. This also lets me make it a lot smaller, since now the wings aren't quite as wide, and overall I put them a lot closer together. So already it's looking a lot more dragonfly-like, the wings are actually kind of close together, and the way they move right now doesn't look too much like a bug, but once I increase the speed, you'll see it's a lot more like it. Now, I have a problem where the front wings are actually pushing up instead of pushing down, so they're doing the exact opposite of what I want them to do. And to fix that, what I need to do is just mess around with some of the servos and the angle limits on them. And once I did that here, you can see it's definitely a lot better, but the wings are a lot closer to hitting each other, and in fact, this is actually a big problem I had, was the wings still hitting into each other. It was much less pronounced, since I could make the wings longer, and I could just push them a little bit further apart, and it all seemed to be fine. Now in this test, I realized how much it really looked like a dragonfly. The wings, the way they moved, look exactly like a bug. And I was getting closer and closer. You can see I'm even getting that sort of drifting effect on the ground that I had before. And to kind of get this done, what I wanted to do was something a little bit cheesy. It didn't quite work out, but if I wanted to stack two sets of wings right on top of each other, now, in Dream Car Builder, very similar game to this, I'm pretty sure this would just work, because having two sets of stacked wings means I create basically double the thrust, even though in real life it wouldn't really work, since the top wing would push right down to the bottom wing, and it would create no net thrust. But these games usually don't consider that kind of airflow, but here it seemed like it either was considering that, and it just was not working, or the added weight of all the framing pieces I added in completely broke it. So unfortunately, that very cheesy solution didn't work, and instead what I did is mess around with the wing shape, I messed around with the timings too, and finally I was able to get it off the ground, and it actually was pretty good. It wasn't perfect, you can see it was kind of struggling to even maintain any height at all, but it did get off and it seemed to be pretty good. So another big optimization I made was getting rid of the big extensions I had that I put the wings on. Now I needed this before because the wings were actually hitting into the body of the dragonfly, but here the way I made the wings, it's not really a problem at all, and I could just save a ton of weight and paneling, and now it's getting off the ground a lot easier, and you can see here it's even drifting a little bit to the side, so it's creating quite a bit of thrust, and once I had that, I was just about ready to start working on the controls. Now what I was going to do is put in a multiply node like like this, and what I wanted to do was also using a constant and setting it to 0.8, I was going to adjust the amount that the wings were pulling back. Now, using the constant of 0.8, you can guess I'm going to have 80% of the pullback I usually do. So in theory, I should be creating about 80% of the thrust. Now, this is more or less the case. Here you can see I'm not getting off the ground anymore, and it's because I'm creating a lot less thrust. And if I set it to zero, you can see the exact effect it has. The wings are just moving straight up and down, and they're not pulling back at all. So I'm creating basically no thrust at all here, or no net 
thrust. Now, I kind of had this in a way I didn't like. I didn't want to adjust how much the wings were pulling back. I actually wanted to adjust how much they were pushing down and pulling up. Now, if I adjust how much they're pushing down, that directly affects the amount of force they're pushing down with, and therefore the amount of force that pushes up the dragonfly. So if I do this, it should linearly affect how much the dragonfly moves. And here when I set it to 0.5, so the wings are moving exactly a half as much as they usually do, you can see it's not getting off the ground at all. So to get my controls working to make this thing move up and down, which is the easiest thing to do, what I'm doing is setting it to be shift and control. So I hit shift, it goes up, control, it goes down. So that means when I hit shift, what it's going to do is divert all of the power to the blades so that I get the maximum amount of force. But if I hit shift, instead what it does is multiplies that value by 0.8, and I start to sink just a little bit. And I found 0.9, which it means I'm hitting none of the keys, that's what I set it to, and it ends up holding pretty much where it should be, and therefore with those three controls I'm able to move up, move down, or stay where I want. Now the next thing to do is to get it to move forwards and backwards, and for this it's actually pretty similar, but instead of affecting all of the blades at once, I just want to affect the front or the back blades. So if I tell the front blades to produce less thrust, the back blades will produce more than them, and it'll rotate the entire thing forward. But if I instead tell the front ones to produce more thrust, it tilts the entire thing backwards. And I'm actually able to use just these two controls to get this thing to move anywhere I want, as long as I don't have to turn. Now that's definitely not exactly great, and I'm going to be fixing that in a second, but I just want to go for a simple test here, and you can see when it pitch up a little bit, it actually manages to stop this thing for the most part, and just keep it at a stable hover. So that was pretty much perfect, and of course the next thing I wanted to do was add in the steering controls. Now for this, as you might have guessed, what I want to do is either limit the thrust produced by the left or the right wings, and this is going to make the entire thing tilt to one side or the other, and I'll be able to sort of tilt and go wherever I want. So this is going to be set to A and D for the controls, and I actually need four multiply nodes instead of just the two I had before, and this is because now with the left and right controls for each of those servos, I have four different controls I need to take care of, so it's just a little more complicated, but overall it's actually pretty similar in terms of the logic that goes into it, and I nearly crashed it immediately because I pitched back way too far, but once I got it under control, I started to hit D, and this immediately made it capsize and completely turn over, so I was hoping that that meant that I was going to get some sort of turning motion out of this. So with most of the controls basically done, all that I really had left to do was sort of go for the aesthetics, and this is one part of main assembly I absolutely love. The ability to be able to curve panels however you want is just so nice. You can see here on the wings, I'm going to end up giving more of a curved profile to make it a little bit more bug-like, and it just looks so good in comparison. So here I was just making sure all the panels looked about right, and also just giving it another quick test to make sure all the controls are good, and it is able to go wherever I want it to. It's able to go up, down, wherever. The problem though with steering is a little rough, and you can see here, I do have some trouble sometimes where it ends up just completely completely going back too far and I lose control, and I realized I could improve the steering a lot by adjusting how much the blades push back. Now this is what I originally was messing with when I put in the multiply nodes, but if I adjust how much it pushes back, it ends up affecting how much it steers to the left and right, and this ends up giving me much better turns. Now in this test it doesn't really look like it, and it's because I actually hooked it up backwards. So the two systems I have in, the old one and the new one, are just completely fighting each other and they don't perfectly cancel out, so the motion just ends up being very odd. So I ended up just flipping around one of the systems. And once I did that, I got it up into the air, actually from the water, which was pretty impressive I was able to do that. And once I hit A, you can see how much this thing just swings around. I'm pretty much able to go wherever I want now, and it's incredibly nimble with this new control. So I painted the whole thing blue, because why not? And also dragonflies seem like they have a slight bluish color. Not this blue, but it looked nice. I also did some final changes to the body, just to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. I'm going for a quick test here. Now the first thing I wanted to do is completely swing around, and you can see I'm totally able to do that. I did a 180 almost instantly, this thing's really nimble, which I'm incredibly happy with. And I'm going for a hover over this lake. Now to do that, I have to pull back a little bit and also tell it to not pitch up as high as I normally have it do. And you can see, after just a little bit of messing with the controls, it's pretty much just perfectly hovering over the lake. And just by messing around with the controls a bit more, I'm able to get it to continue moving again. And then finally, I'm trying to land here. Now I added in another control, you probably saw it earlier. If I hit space, it actually stops the entire thing from moving, and I can also use it to start it as well. This is more of a quality of life thing than anything, so I'm able to land wherever I want, or I'm able to start not immediately. So guys, thanks for watching. Not gonna lie, I was incredibly pleased with the way that this video turned out. I really like this dragonfly, and in fact, main assembly too. I really like the game, love the controls, I think the programming mode is amazing, and I didn't even touch a ton of it. There's advanced math like derivatives, exponentials, logs, and I think I could really do something cool with a lot of this. So if you want to see more of this content, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below, and otherwise, until next time.